part of the Earglue Media family of podcast. You're listening to the Cantina Cast. Your home for thought-provoking Star Wars talk. Join Adler and Jonesy in breaking down the latest news, trailers, movies, and of course, your favorite characters from a galaxy far, far away. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Mando Monday. I am your host, Mike Rondo, and well, I have to say, now this episode, uh, Chapter 15, The Believer, was pretty good. It was solid. I think it was like the overall performance and, and the overall episode was just solid all the way through. It wasn't uh, as epic as the last two chapters were, but this was pretty solid. Um, of course, when you have Shore Troopers, which, and I was going to do this, if you're watching on our YouTube on, on the Cantina cast, I was going to wear my Shore Trooper helmet to intro the show, but it wasn't really feasible. I didn't think you guys would hear me. Not that you really want to hear me, but in any case... I'll uh, put that back there. So, in any case, the shore troopers were amazing. I loved seeing that. Uh, and was were they the tank or the... I guess they were tank troopers. Were they the mud troopers? I don't think they were mud troopers. No, the mud troopers have their face that that's exposed. But in any case, shore troopers were there. That's all that really mattered. Uh, good call back to Rogue One. Uh, they were on a tropical planet, so that makes sense, right? And, of course, the Slave One action was just... Uh, I was like, uh, I was giddy, like a schoolboy, you know? It was awesome seeing the Slave 1, uh, especially the interior of the ship and how it, it rotates around whatever action they're going to be in in the atmosphere and stuff like that. It was pretty cool to see that take place. We've, we, you know, we've seen the cockpit and everything, but we've never seen how that all works, and it was great to see that. And, uh, of course, what I lost my mind was with the seismic charges happening. Uh, I didn't think they were going to go there. I'm like, well... There's a chance, but I didn't think they were going to go there. And then, you know, Boba Fett did it. I'm I curi- I'm curious if he, when he flips the buttons on that, if he makes it so it's not as, I guess, loud as the ones that were with Obi-Wan Kenobi uh, in Attack of the Clones. But uh, the, the cool thing was I told my daughter there's a callback to Attack of the Clones, and that's her favorite Star Wars movie. I know, I know. It, it's it's a weird thing, but it, it is. And if you think when you think about it, though, there was some pretty cool moments in Attack of the Clones the seismic charges being being that. So uh, she got really excited when she saw it. So it was awesome to see her jump up and down and, and get crazy about it. And uh, the thing that surprised me was Boba Fett freshening up his armor like that. I didn't think that was going to happen anytime soon, but he did that. I guess the Slave 1 will get a paint job probably in the next episode. Um, but anyway, I usually typically do the good, the bad, and the ugly. Uh, the good is all of it. And I guess the the, the one thing that really stood out was the TPS reports uh, Easter egg from uh, <laughs> Office Space, which is is my favorite all time, one of my favorite movies. And to hear that, that was just that was just beautiful. Um, uh, the other thing was there was a lot of character development with with Din, our main character. I mean, it took a big jump compared to what he's been doing. It's been little increments here and there. But then we had the big jump when he takes his helmet off. He's obviously, you know all invested in the child now, although it was a little weird last chapter where he was like, oh, the child's gone, no big deal. And Boba's like, no, 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 we're going to go get the child. So it was a little odd, but uh, it's good to see that, you know, he took this giant step and and we got hints of this all throughout the season so far where he's getting close to taking the helmet off. And now he did. I mean, sadly, it was it was it was in front of Mayfeld, but, um, you know, you think it would have been in front of the child or a Cara Dune or something like that, but it's fine. It works. Um and of course, I guess the the other thing was Fennec and Cara Dune teaming up, teaming up. Those two together are awesome. I want to see more of that as well. Um, and of course, Mayfeld's character, who's, I, you know, last year his character was good, served his purpose. I figured we'd see this group again, and and here we are now. I didn't think I was going to end up liking him in this. I thought he was going to just serve his purpose again, which he did, but he his character grew and that was pretty cool. And the best part about Mayfeld and even the Imperial officer, who I can't remember his name either, um, they were asking some pretty deep philosophical questions and political questions when you think about it, um, which I, I gotta, we'll get to that in a moment. But anyway, that, that was what stood out for me is there was things in this episode that made you think, which, which is what makes this episode shine, I think, 
um, compared to the last two. The last two were epic in action, storytelling, and character development for others around Din, but this was more important, I think, for the world itself, the world and how it's happening and, and things are developing around in the galaxy. Din taking that big jump, Mayfeld with that whole, his character developing like that, and then those questions that are asked by him and by the Imperial officer, um, whether you believe it or not, they're right or wrong or whatever, it made you think, and that was awesome, and I love that. So the bad was, it wasn't as good as 5 and 6 as far as the epic meter, right? Uh, the ugly, not much. Maybe some of the line dialogue was delivered iffy. Uh, Gina, a little little off a bit, but for the most part, it was fine. It was no big deal. Nothing. Um, nothing bad, nothing ugly, really. It was just, it was really good. Um, uh, so what do we got? We got questions remaining, right? Uh, a few of them. We have one. What is What are the Imperials doing with the refinery of Rod- Rodinium? I, I think I said that right. Um, and he says they're going to wreck havoc. The Imperial office says, you know, Operation Cinder, which was a great call. There was a lot of great callbacks in this episode in the Star Wars galaxy or whatnot. Deep cuts, if you will. And I'm just curious what they're going to use this for because I'm thinking, all right, this doesn't tie into Starkiller Base or anything. Does this tie into maybe the cannons that are on the first, uh, uh, the final order, uh, uh, the Sith fleet there with those uh, planet killing uh, devices that they got on there? I don't know. Does it tie in with that? I'm not sure, but I just thought it was uh, interesting. Now, who were the pirates? Were they pirates or they insurgents? Did the villagers hire them because they're different than the villagers that we see where Din goes by and he has a reflection of himself. So I'm not sure what that was about, but it was interesting. Um, And of course, you know, the face scan thing with Din, this is the big question for me. How did that happen? You would think he would get rejected, but he kind of knew he could do it. So I got a feeling there's somewhere along the line that he infiltrated the Imperial academy somehow and or whatever i don't know there's a mystery there somehow some way i mean i'm confused because we go to the clone wars and he's obviously taken by death watch and that's the end unless death watch puts him on a mission to infiltrate the imperials somehow that we just don't know about maybe we'll learn in a flashback or something i don't know i'm confused about this maybe some of you have a, a better understanding maybe something's been revealed or whatever i know uh when they did the uh the Bad Batch trailer, I'd said, uh, maybe that's not Fennec, but they said, no, 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 that is Fennec. In that trailer, I thought maybe she was part of some assassin group or whatever, and maybe that wasn't her. But in any case, maybe this is a situation there where it's been revealed. I just have no idea. But I was just curious how he was able to get it and get, you know, do his thing. That was a great scene. That shootout was awesome. That was one of my favorite shootouts in all of The Mandalorian so far. That was really cool. I mean, I love Bill Burr just rocks back and then just shoots the, the Shaw Trooper, sadly. Um, a lot of dead shore troopers, unfortunately, but anyway, uh, so let's see the observations for this week is just the, uh, the weakness of, of the armor with the Imperial armor, um, and how Beskar helps out Din and and the Mandalorians. That was obvious. And then they were also showing his skills with the staff because you, you gotta be, this is like foreshadowing the the big fight that we know it's coming with Moth Gideon. And then you gotta ask yourself, you know, where he throws the spear and gets one of the pirates or, or the insurgent there. And you got to think, is this what he does to Moff Gideon? Um, which would be interesting if he does that. So we, obviously this is foreshadowing everything. Um, uh, you know, and then the other thing I, I noticed was returning to the hangar. We got the opposite right here where we were actually rooting for the Imperials this time when they showed up and helped out. And then you see a different side of that. Again, a philosophical thing makes you question like they're human too, makes you think about these things. And then of course they're in the hangar. And they're cheering and everything. It made me think of A New Hope. It's like the reverse. It's like the Empire side of that, which was pretty cool. I thought that was interesting to do that. Um, and, of course, the must-have have action figure next Christmas is going to be Din Djarin and his mustache, right? Like, we don't have enough mustached action figures. Man at arms, yes. Um, but, no. No, we gotta have, we got to have Din, uh, Pedro Pascal's mustache on a, and a, an action figure. Um... The other thing I wanted to throw out there before I wrap this up, this is a real quick episode because it was a, it was kind of a quick episode. It was a solid episode. It was a fun episode. It had a lot of those philosophical questions that made you think, so I loved it. So not much to go there, but the only thing I have is, is this the beginning of the, as I called it, the Space Rangers, right? That's the new show that's coming out on, on Disney+. Plus. Uh, it's, what is it, the, the Rangers of the Republic or the New Republic or something like that? I'm calling them Space Rangers at the moment. I don't know why. I can All I can think of is... is uh, uh, Buzz Lightyear and the Space Rangers and all that other stuff. But anyway, it's like Fennec, Dune, 
Mayfeld uh, and others going to team up, and this is going to be the ragtag Rangers uh, of the New Republic. Maybe uh, the only problem I have is if that's the case, then Boba gets involved, and I don't want Boba being Mr. Nice Guy. I don't mind him helping out here because that was part of the agreement and the deal, and he's a practical man kind of thing, doing what's what he's going to do, but I don't want him teaming up and, you know, being buddies and part of the New Republic and all that other stuff. I'd rather him just... You pay me and I'll help you out type of thing. And uh or maybe he helps out a friend like Fennec and that and these occasionally he'll help them out. Um just because it's good to have contacts and friends and use them for something else or whatever. But that's my take on that. I don't really want Boba Fett being nice. But maybe I'm wrong. Uh the only other thing I want to throw out there is an observation is that Boba Fett, you know, we said this all last year and even earlier this year, is that he was gonna overshadow Din Djarin and he's not. I know we've been, and I've said a couple episodes ago, we were talking about Boba Fett, Ahsoka. We weren't really talking about Din and his character development. But overall, I don't think he's taken away from Din at all. If anything, he's complimented. Now that you see these episodes uh, unfold and everything, I think he's complimented him a lot and not taken away from him. So, but anyway, that's going to do it for this week. Um, it's been a lot of fun. This episode was great. Um, and what more can I say? So I'll see you guys next week. Next week's the finale. Hard to believe it's already over and it's crazy to think, but uh, it should be a good one. And I look forward to it. So let's see what happens. Which Who's the Jedi that'll show up? You're still listening? Wow, that's amazing. Well, I'm here to give you the disclaimer. Normally we do a big, long, drawn out disclaimer thing saying what's what and who's what and all that other stuff. But I think you guys kind of know that Lucasfilm and Disney have... Uh, no affiliation with us at all, uh, and we have none with them. Uh, we talk about Star Wars, which is their property, and all that other good, fun stuff. Uh, but I think you can tell which is our stuff and which is their stuff. If you can't, well, then send a lawyer to send an email to me, and I'll be glad to chat with them. Other than that, you know what's what, so that's your disclaimer.